please welcome to the stage Lawrence Williams. How are we all tonight, everybody? Sorry, that is a longer walk than I anticipated. Hi everyone, my name is Lawrence Williams and thank you very, very much for joining us here tonight. Uh, I should also let you know that we are live right across the country via our webinar, so hello to everyone who is joining us right across the country and in fact the world. We know that there's a few people that are tapping into uh, this webinar from uh, Austria as well. Now we've got a very exciting night planned for you tonight and we're going to uh, listen and learn from two very inspirational women on the stage. But before we start, why not start by giving away a few gifts from us here at Enyo. Now we have pre-selected four names as you are registering. We uh, had a prize selector go through and select a few names for us. And we've got some uh, goodie bags that are going to be available to you after tonight's event at our registration desk. Uh, so as I read your name, just make a note that you don't forget to go collect that. It's well over $200 in value right from Austria. You are going to get unique gifts that are not available to uh, customers in general there. So. What I can say is I'm going to apologise first and foremost because some of the names that are listed on here are going to be very hard to pronounce. <laughs> I've just had to read through some of those. So, Hannah Penbernethy. Penbernethy. Congratulations, Hannah. We have Ariana Panatera. Yes, in the room. We've also got Ida Angarini right down the front here. And we've got Donna Fissel back. So a round of applause for our winners, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> of course, you would have seen on your seats a fantastic gift bag. Uh, that is a kind gift from Enyo Australia to you, where you'll find some nice goodies in there from Sante by Enyo. So let's get started. As I mentioned before, I have two very inspirational guests that are going to join me on stage tonight. And you're going to learn what it takes to be a successful business person in this very, very competitive landscape. And my first guest tonight is someone who has started a business from the humble beginnings from her garage to a multi-million dollar business that has stretched right across Australia that has put tens of thousands of women into their own business, creating them a successful business in their own right. She is known as a hustler. She is stylish. She is sassy. Please welcome to the stage CEO and founder of Venue Australia and my friend, Barb DeCordy. Welcome, oh. Barb. It's a long walk, isn't it? It is a very long walk, yeah. Mwah. I, I, I always surprises me how famous I sound. I sound really amazing, don't <laughs> I? I go, yes, that's me. <laughs> now, Hello, you know, everybody. Um, you're no stranger to Brisbane, but welcome back. Flown in today, nice and fresh for tonight's event. Yep. Now, as I said, 24 years ago, almost 25 years ago. I know. Oh, <laughs> I started when I was 15. You you started your, your very own business. Mm -hmm. Now, you're known as a very successful CEO and founder, as I touched on before, but take us back right to the beginning. What made you decide to start your very own business with Enyo? I think I started already when I was very little. I was always, um, I never liked to go the path most um, traveled. So I was always quite unique. And um, I actually was never actually employed per se because I always worked for myself. Uh, even when I was employed, I always had um, various ideas. So when I came across Enyo then, um, I think that's basically when I saw the opportunity. Uh, and also I'm a bit of a, I'm a bit thrifty and also I'm all about uh, uh, sustainability. So no, I wouldn't necessarily go out of my way to do something for the environment, but if, if I can be smarter instead of working harder, that would be me. So Enya really suited me from that point, you know? Fantastic, and there was, a, there was an ultimate decision that made you want to start with Enyo in particular, because I can imagine you could have gone 100 different ways from choosing your own business. Why Enyo in particular? Because um, it worked, um, and it, uh, most importantly, it helped my son. Uh, and he was very little, uh, he was diagnosed with asthma. And uh, I think one of the things is, and I always talk about passion and purpose, um, and there's nothing more passionate in, about your children 
And then when you actually find that purpose as well, which will help your child because you eliminate uh, a small part of uh, what makes a kid sick, and one of it was, uh, and it still is in, in asthmatics, is, is chemicals, uh, then of course uh, I think I found my vocation. And I wanted to share with everybody who had asthma or eczema or any of those things and, and wanted to show people um, there's a product uh, which you can just use and clean with without actually adding to uh, people's, um, I mean, uh, you know, I mean, there's enough pollutants in the air without having to bring them home in a spray bottle as well. So that was really my impetus and my passion then. And it was a, it was a big wow factor back in the day when you when you first launched and you know, here in, in Australia, people couldn't quite believe how easy it was to clean. But they still you, can't. They still can't. Oh my goodness! But yeah. would you agree that there's no better time for Enyo as a product than now? It's, it's the most relevant now because, uh, I mean, uh, the war on waste uh, and uh, the environment, we had our go in between. And w what makes me really smile a little bit and, uh, laconically, I go, uh, we have been talking about this for 24 years now, 25 years, and educating households, you know, that uh, harsh chemicals are not needed, spray bottles and throwing out, they throw away society, you know. I mean, I, we create so many tons of, of waste every year which could be avoided and on top of it it makes us sick so yes for 24 years we have been talking about those things and at long last now I think the rest of the world is catching on especially the younger generation I think they are probably a bit more educated and more willing uh, to try new things and um, they're a bit more conscious where they see the future of the planet going now, for those in the room who aren't familiar with your, your products, Avenio mm -hmm. and, and Santo Baño, and those that are joining us via the webinar, we've got some on the, uh, on the table in front of us, and you are known as the, the queen of the demo. Uh, give us a bit of a, a, a talking of, of how this actually works, because a lot of people would look at that and go, how? Why is it so amazing? Uh, well, I got, won't give you a lesson in fiber technology because it actually it's engineered by people who do nothing else. They studied at the university. So most of our fibers are actually man-made fibers. So basically, um, they um, are polyester or, or a polyamid. And what actually happens is the fibers replaces your chemical in your cleaner. A lot of what slushes around in your spray bottle is actually water. So basically what they do, they create a powder and then they dilute the powder and you get your, uh, um, you get your spray and wipe. So in, in or not any brand name, just you spray and wipe thingy. So this is basically replacing a chemical. The water is your solvent. So this is, that is something you have already got at home. So when it actually happens is the green fiber is for grease um, and we stuck with green and grease because it's easy to remember. So this particular fiber, we'd actually cut through grease. So it's a different composition than the white fiber, which actually will cut through calcium deposits and soap uh, deposits. So they're a little bit more pointy. Those are more round fibers. What actually happened is um, basically physical instead of chemical. So the physical uh, action of the fiber together with the water lifts the dirt. Very, very simple. Uh, the ironic thing is in the olden days, the old brush and uh, ash, uh, you know, people used to do, when you see those Abbey, um, Downtown Abbey, the movies, or the, the TV series when they brush the floors with ash, this is actually a similar system, just more sophisticated. And then we spray, we um, wet, well, actually we wet, wipe, and uh, dry. So basically, I usually have a water spray bottle on me because I do not believe uh, that you should make the glove too wet uh, if it is not necessary. You only need more water if the surface is more dirty. I'm a lazy cleaner, so I, I only spray this with, with water and off we go. And then we dry off. Drying off means you pick up any water which might still have some dirt in it and it also will prohibit uh, bacteria growth. So. One of the most important thing is, we've been doing this worldwide for 29 years, so we know it's working, because you can't keep it up for 29 years if it doesn't work, so that's a known fact. Now, what we're actually looking for is people preparedness to change, and the beautiful thing is nowadays, people are ready to do so. So, that's a simple lesson. Excellent. Oh, my favorites. My, no, I don't have favorites. Like with children, you don't have an <laughs> official favorite, you know? That's why I only have my one child. I couldn't imagine spreading all my love and more than one. So, um, 
This, those are makeup removers. We have been doing them since 2011, so we were the original ones who came out with them, and our latest invention is just that it's seamless. And one of the things is you can just take your makeup off without actually using anything else but water, and that's the beautiful thing about it. We replace also about 4,800 of your cotton uh, squares or the cotton buds, which basically you just go down on the landfill. But it's also costing you about $300 a year just for the cotton things to take your face off, never mind the other liters of um, the other products you might be using. This is an amazing must-have. I believe there's one uh, similar product in the goodie bag. Yeah, I believe you've got a face cleanser in, yeah. your, in your body bag, which has the same Same. Fiber. On one side is exfoliating, on the, other, uh, on the other side you have the makeup remover, which is just fantastic. This is really our latest uh, product we brought out, uh, the seamless one, but the, the makeup removers have been around for close to 10 years now. Not a great product. Now, as you can see, Bob's very passionate about uh, Enyo, and of course, Sante, Sante by Enyo. 25 years, you must have seen a lot over those 25 years. As I said at the start, you've introduced tens of thousands of women into their own uh, successful businesses. Where do you see Enyo heading in the next 25 years? Oh my God, I'm probably going to be dead, but um, <laughs> let's just say um, that I can give it a, I think we're just going to go from strength to strength, you know, because we cannot live healthy on a sick planet. Something we'll have to give. You know, we eat kale, we eat very well, and uh, we buy organic, we buy, this, uh, uh, we buy uh, um, uh, supreme price for, uh, I don't know, uh, we have Peter, which basically tells us not to wear fur. Uh, we, we, we're starting to really become conscious that we have to do something because we can't go on like we do. So I can only see us going from strength to strength. What excites me more than our product, because our product sells very well, uh, I think, but uh, it's the opportunity it offers people. And I'm not just saying it because I'm selling it. Uh, it's, um, I know what it afforded me and I know what it has afforded other people and other entrepreneurs, thousands Australia-wide uh, over the years, but I also know what it affords the customer through savings uh, on, uh, on not only on the price point or the value, because just imagine three years of annual might cost you, let's say, $700. Three years of detergents, if you would have to buy them all in one go, would cost you $3,500. Now, and you would have to store it in a garage now, um, because we buy things one by one, you know, it, it does, it, uh, we don't necessarily see it. You spend $20 here, $20 there. So um, I find it just extraordinary that, that we still go down that, that track after all those years. Research, fiber technology like the iPhone or any phone is constantly developing. I mean, it, you know, fiber technology, which this is our latest thing which came out in February. We're already working on um, some new things, you know, a different combination, which not only, uh, you know, which will also brighten your skin, you know, we just uh, have uh, come out with a product uh, next month, uh, which we developed to take your face mask off. So it's constant development and investment in there as well. But not only in the product, but also with the people we work with, because we're all about empowering women. And, um, you know, I really believe uh, when you want to run uh, your own little empire, you can do that. You don't have to become an influencer. Influencers are done and dusted with the greatest respect. Those people which came on board six, seven years ago or whatever it was, you know, they, they settled in. To start something now as an influencer, you need to stand for something. How about you stand for your own and your business and start it from that health angle or from, from a sustainability angle, you know? So there's various ways you can actually do your annual business. And that excites me about the future with, with annual because it has, it's so much more than going and demonstrating the product in somebody's home. And there's plenty of, of demos out there. One of our top entrepreneurs uh, last month, uh, she sold for $40,000 in demos. Not because um, people came knocking on her door. She loves it so much, and that's her choice. And some might sell for $2,000 or $400. At the end of the day, it depends on the individual. But the business, that's the exciting part, is there for anybody who wants it, you know? And you don't have to have a million followers to really make uh, good money, you know? <laughs> Now, and, you know, in the scheme of, of the retail world, a lot has changed over, over the last 25 years. Where does Enyo fit now in the uh, 
retail landscape? The exciting part is we don't. <laughs> if, you want to, if you want to be successful, don't do what everybody is already doing because, let's face it, you yesterday's news. You always have to reinvent yourself. The one of the things is, you know, we work with passion, we work with purpose. You need to participate in your own business and this will give you a paycheck. One of the things is we run a hybrid at Enyo. Um, we decided it about five years ago uh, where we have demos, where you, uh, you, can, you have four or five people together. We have an amazing host reward system where the, where the hosts are more than happy to, to allow us to use their home to demonstrate the product. We're very giving to the customer as well. And the other thing is also we have an online um, system where basically the entrepreneur earns the full commission. We send newsletters out on your behalf we, uh, to our customers. You know, your name is attached to your customer or to the end your customer you have introduced, so forth. So we, we, we are unique in that regard because what companies want to do all the time is, you know, they think, well, we're doing this for you, hence I give you less commission or stuff like that. This is not what we're all about. We're all about everybody wins along the way and that's what I'm so proud of in our company. Now, you must come across naysayers who just can't fathom that the product works, like you say yeah. it works. You're passionate. Mm. I'm on board. Yeah. But what, what do you say to those that, especially when removing makeup, for example, when mm. you were talking about Sante, what do you say to those people that just don't believe that it could remove a face full of makeup just using water? And That's a okay. You're not ready for it. That's as <laughs> simple as that. You know, uh, let's face it, uh, anything in life is subjective, you know, even honesty is subjective. You know, what you might consider as honest or, uh, or so, somebody else might not. W whatever, life is subjective, like reality. I will never, ever try to convince anybody to join my company or uh, to hold a demo for me or uh, to, to purchase the product. Uh, if we, uh, through our demonstration and through our actions and our integrity and our values, uh, you know, are not good enough to convince people, then people are not ready, which is okay. You know, we can't all be ready because, quite frankly, I wouldn't have enough products in, in, in the warehouse, you know? So it's one step at a time. And uh, some people need three to four times convincing, but I'm most certainly not going to ram down somebody's throat if they are happy with what they're using and are not prepared to change. That's their choice. And it's, it, we are not in a free country. Now, you've worked with some pretty big names yep. in the industry. One of them is in the room with us tonight, will mm -hmm. be joining us very, very soon. But we're not only talking personalities, we're talking big brands. We've had Asthma Australia, we've had KidSafe. Um, but the, the people that have been with you right from the very, very start is, of course, your consultants or your entrepreneurs, yep. as you call them, hand in hand, right from the get-go when you launched Enyo. Tell us a bit about your relationship with the Enyopreneur uh, and how you work with Maybe them on a day-to-day basis. Maybe we should ask them, shouldn't we? Because <laughs> <laughs> as I said, it's all a bit subjective, isn't it? Um, well, I truly believe that uh, as a company, um, you should be able to scratch any company's surface, you know. Uh, your words should also be shown in your action. And nowadays, it's a small planet, you know, and it's a small world. So I truly believe uh, to, um, I see my entrepreneurs, I call them a mime, like my children, um, and the, the, as business partners. And, um, you know, we supply them with marketing material. Um, anything needed to run a successful business, we will be there to help with, you know. And, and that's, I think, is just something... Um, it's important to me because when, when I first started out at the business 25 years ago in September the 16th this year, um, when the first palette of products came in, and I knew nothing. I had passion and I even had a purpose, but I had absolutely no clue what to do, you know? And, um, you know, I, I just wanted to develop something where people just have to plug in and, uh, you know, and they get the training. Uh, they get all the support needed to help you to build your business. You might come for a reason, you may come for a season, you might even come for a lifetime, you know? You might come just to learn how to run your own business. You have a love for the product, but you know, you might say, I'm only gonna do this for a year, and then I want to start something myself because I have seen an opportunity, which is come with us. Learn from us along the way, you know? And learn what it and what is necessary to run your own business. Because quite frankly, even when you work with us here at Enyo, it is still going to be tough. 
you still have to do the work. We can supply with all the computer systems and, and the advertising. The end of the day, you need to get up in the morning early, preferable. <laughs> put on your clothes, <laughs> and then, oh, you can be naked, or whatever it takes, you know, uh, but, you know, nowadays with phones, when you have face, uh, you know, face them, maybe not, um, but you still have to do it. So anybody can give you anything, you still have to do it, you know, it's like that exercise bike in your, in, at your home. You don't get fit just because you have an exercise bike at home. No, you don't get fit by watching the football, you know, or the tennis. You actually get fit by doing, and the same is in business, you know. So I have no idea what the question was, but what I said was really clever. I think she answered it. <laughs> <laughs> clever. Yeah, I have we'll to write remember that one down. Analogy. I'll write that one down. Yeah, maybe I have to write. Can somebody write it down for me because I'm sure. <laughs> so you, you said that people join the business for a, a reason, a season, season, or a lifetime. Life, yeah. So that's flexible hours within their own. Some may want to do it full time, part time. What would an average week in the life of an entrepreneur look like? Well, it's depending, you know, if you're somebody like uh, the lady who just sold for $40,000, it probably involves 40 hours uh, a week, you know, and she's also a senior team leader. If you just choose to do one or two demos uh, a week, it's your week will uh, look different as well. Most of our entrepreneurs work either full times or a part time, and uh, so they do it as a side hustle, so four to five demos a month and uh, do earn a bit of an, an income, which, which around four to five demos a month would give you an income anywhere between $1,000 and $1,200, you know, with a 20-hour uh, investment. So it really depends how you want to run your business. Discipline is, is important and uh, actually a care factor. Care factor for yourself, first and um, foremost, uh, not to disappoint yourself and uh, also to teach yourself not to listen to your own excuses, you know. So, uh, and then uh, caring for others as well. Once you take the pressure off yourself and start caring about others, that's when the business then falls in place. Now, I believe you've got a video that you would like to share with us Do I know? tonight. I'm sorry, uh, how clever am I? A bit of a message from some of your entrepreneurs yourself. So let's have a look at this video and we'll be back in a sec. Commercial break. Commercial break. Through my mother's group, and that was about two and a half years ago, and that's where my passion began with Enyo. Through my work colleague, I was talking to her about how I was concerned about the bugs and chemicals I was bringing home from work because I'm a chemotherapy nurse. I wanted a better solution to the chemicals that I was using to clean the bath. I didn't want my daughter exposed to bleach, so I wanted to find a better solution and she introduced me to Enyo. When I attended a Enyo business seminar, there was one thing that was said that really stuck with me and it was the relevance of Enyo and the product itself. Having something that's sustainable and reusable really hit home with me and I thought why not give it a go. It's something that I use and I really believe in. The main reason would be because at the time I was on maternity leave with my daughter and she was nine months old. I actually was starting to stress and the fact that I was committed to go back to work and I didn't know how I would be able to go back to work working nine to five and stipulated with the hours as well. So I actually thought to myself, I really need to look at my own business and Enyo was a choice because I love the products. Part time, I work three days a week. Um, I'm also a full time mum and I do as many other days or hours as I can with Enyo. Extra income, I work full time, so it's something that I do on the side on the weekends. My husband uh, works FIFO, so there's a lot of weekends that I'm at home, so I just thought it's something else to get me out of the house, so I would start it and yeah, I've gone from there. I run my Enyo business on a full-time basis. Um, half of that is being an Enyopreneur, in which I like to do, do two demos a week. Then the other half of my time, I actually run my business as a senior team leader. I run my Enyo business as a part-time income. It's more of a hobby for me. I enjoy getting out and meeting new people. The support that we get from Enyo HQ is absolutely incredible and something like I've never ever witnessed in any type of business before. From the moment you start your business um, to me now a year on, I'm still getting continued support. Um, we have in-house training sessions, we've got the training portal online as well, we've got access to so many tools and resources, it's just incredible. 
We've got a great marketing department, so I find it's like our own little PA. I've got there for marketing. Everything's put out there um, with regards to social media, which is the latest technology. E-training, manuals, um, product information, selling techniques, everything, even time management skills, how to manage a business if it's full-time or if it's part-time. Um, eConnect has all your customer database. You don't have to do anything, and that's one of the things I think it really helps is to have a successful business is having that starting point and it's all done for you. It's really created like a good community base, like I've gotten out, I've gotten to know people, um, networking, friendships, it's just been really good for self-confidence. I have the flexibility to work the hours that I want to work and be at home more with my family. Becoming an Enyo business owner for me has not only improved me as an individual, but it's just grown me so much as well. Since I started my business, I was quite reserved and not very confident. It's grown my confidence so much, and I'm so grateful for everything that Enyo have done for me. I guess if you were to ask a few of my friends, they'd actually say I've got an extraordinary life, and I guess that's probably because I do get to go on a lot of holidays. Um, it's something that does inspire me. definitely getting my 30 day pin. I came into Enyo thinking just give it a go and see how I go um, and honestly how well I did in the first couple of months really surprised me um, but I also was surprised at how easy it was to do. Qualifying to go to New York I was lucky enough to qualify for breakfast at Tiffany's and also a $1,500 Tiffany's voucher which I can't wait to spend. probably for two reasons. The confidence thing, thinking that you can't do it, um, and it's always easier to talk yourself out of something opposed to talking yourself into something. Because it may be a fear that they have, and that could be a fear of failure within their business, or even a fear within themselves as well, because they don't have self-development. Um, it can't be anything to do with the cost of the setup because we have Afterpay now, so it's so much easier for people to actually join the business and earn money and pay for their kid as they go along. To be honest, the way that Enyo HQ provide you with all the support, they teach you a lot of time management skills, which makes it so much easier. And also, speaking in front of crowds and gaining your confidence, that just comes with the business. But the product speaks for itself and it sells itself. And nine times out of ten, the people in the room do all the work for you. I would, say, I would tell them to go for it. The fact that Enyo is so sustainable, it's good for the environment, it's also good for your health as well. It just makes it such an easy, easy product to sell. It feels like you're not even selling it, you're just changing somebody's life by giving it to them. It's grown me as an individual and I've made so many new friends and I've got a whole new lease of life. Oh, definitely. Um, as I said, a lot of people do say I live the extraordinary life and I like to know that I live the flexible life with my main priorities working around my family. It's given me financial freedom. It's, it's given me the ability to get out of the house and meet new people and provide an extra income for my family. This is good. That must make you feel very special. It does, because bit. I know all those ladies, actually, and it is quite amazing when, when I see them. And I um, actually trained most of them myself as well um, in, in Perth. And um, I still remember them, especially uh, Cassie and um, Haley. They didn't say two words during the, uh, during the training, you know, so it was quite amazing to see then how they developed. And they also go out of their way and help with other things as well now, so not just in, in, the, in your business. So they're real true stories and uh, makes me very proud of those girls because, uh, you know, and they're not all, they're, they're not, you know, working 40 hours a week in the business. Some obviously like Rochelle. Uh, spends more time uh, than somebody like Kezi, who is also, uh, um, is she a midwife? No, um, chemo, uh, chemo nurse, you know. So, uh, yeah, that was a little bit how your week could look with Enyo. I could watch it all day long, but then again, <laughs> that's not why I'm here, is it? <laughs> well, we, we're soon to get on to Roxy, just saying, but let's, let's talk about a little bit about your relationship with Roxy. It's been a uh, work in progress for well over 18 months now. Correct. Tell us what first attracted you to Roxy as a fellow uh, business owner uh, and what your working relationship is, is like. 
Well, basically, I always admire people who stick things out, you know, because business is, it's, it's, it can be terribly simple, but it's not always easy. Anybody can run a business and can be popular, and every, when the world is, the sun is shining, you know, and, and we all, you know, skip through the, uh, through the lanes and drink champagne and everything is fine. I always watch people uh, when either the media goes for you or um, uh, they, 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 something happens in their business or, or whatever. Life is, you know, with children or whatever. And, uh, and I admire that strength in people because most of us would just, or many people would just lie down and say, well, me. And I, I must admit I have seen many of them over the years over things where you, where you just think, you know, this is a champagne problem, you know. It's not even a first world problem, you know. So, um, and then I saw what the media was going for Roxy, and I didn't know much about Roxy besides the PR company, and so I started reading about the young woman who got done for, for something she didn't even do, you know, and the media was constantly going for her, it was on the news, it was, and, you know, and she supported her husband and uh, everything, and then um, we, do, we were looking for a PR company, and... Um, we were in head office, uh, our internal PR person, Claire, and I were sitting there and I said, we're going to go for Sweaty Betty. And <laughs> everybody went, me? She's in the news for the wrong reason. I said, no, she's in the news for the right reason. She, you know, it always just said she stands by her man, you know, she, she's professional, she just this, 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 this. Now, she, we, we, she, if somebody knows how to make a silk purse out of a, uh, of a sow's ear, she will. And we needed, at the time we launched Sante as, as our new name, and so we got, got on to her, and lo and behold, we spoke to her. She was back like that to us, you know, and, you know, uh, we can do this, we can do that, you know, what's the budget, well, you know, and things like that, and she delivered. I've worked with so many PR companies which promise you the world and never deliver, you know. And to deliver, you need to actually understand the product. You need to have a love for a product, and you have to have integrity to actually to deliver. And that's how I first came to work with, with Roxy. And uh, yeah, in the last 18 months, she helped us really to put our brand uh, on the market again, because like any brand which has been around for 23 years, 24 years, it becomes a bit old and stale. Help us to introduce it to a, a younger audience. And um, yeah, you know, from, from that point, just from, from, from a professional point, it was very rewarding. But I also admire her business decorum, and hence I love uh, working with her, and I also consider her a good friend of mine now. Well, and I think her story and, and her advice is definitely worthwhile sharing with you for anybody who wants to start their own business. Do you think we should bring her out then? I think we should wheel her I out. think it's about time. She's waiting <laughs> patiently out the back there. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage entrepreneur managing several businesses herself, including Sweaty Better PR, a social influencer for some of the biggest brands, not only in Australia but the world, Roxy Jasenko. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, no, you see them. Hi, everyone. Welcome along, Roxy. Thank you. Very exciting. Flown in uh, nice and early this morning from Perth, of all places, so you've been jet-setting all across uh, Australia. I'll say that Perth, red-eye fly, is an absolute <laughs> bitch. <laughs> <laughs> but I brushed up you're, you're, right. yeah, you're brushing up <laughs> right. No, nothing, like, ten layers of makeup won't fix. <laughs> yeah. I shall do my demo of the Sante removal of it yeah. post this seminar. <laughs> yeah. So you're feeling fresh, you're feeling fresh, because of course yes. we're going to be opening it up to some questions for our audience or from our audience tonight. First, let me ask you a few questions surrounding you, yourself, and starting up your own business. Tell us about starting your own business in your experience and what it takes to succeed. It's hard. Every day is hard. And I think that was one of the biggest things for me when Barb came to me. Um, I was very appreciative of what she'd achieved as a single woman in business. And she was um, obviously a mother. And it was not dissimilar to my position. My husband was in jail. Um, I was on my own. I was running a business. Um, and I didn't have any support in terms of back-end support um, other than my staff. Um, what's quite amazing about Enyo is the fact that you know, you've got that back-end support no matter what. And it's not a one- or two-man band. It's a large office, you know, and that's so unique. That's one of the things that was the hardest for me. You know, my husband went to jail. I got cancer. I had two children. And I had these three businesses at the time. And I was like, oh, my God. 
Um, but I kept going. And, you know, one of the hardest things in business is, you know, when you've got personal problems, and my problems are no different to anybody else's. I guess mine just get written about. Um, but the reality of it is, you know, starting a business is hard. It requires dedication. You're going to fall over. You're going to make mistakes. But how you can avoid that is having someone who can back you. And that's why Enyo, for me, was a brand that I was like, wow, this is amazing. If I had have had that opportunity, I could have saved myself a hell of a lot of money and a hell of a lot of aggravation for all the mistakes mistakes and, and, and errors I made in my beginnings. So when you, when you started your business, I believe you were 24 years old. And I'm only 26 now. You're only 26 <laughs> now. It's only been a couple of years. What were, what were some of the things that you faced as a young business owner Oh, starting out in the world of business. What didn't I face? You know, one of the biggest things, and, and obviously there's a lot of women, not only women, but there's a lot of women in this room. You know, I was 24 and everyone was like, oh, she's a girl. She's got no idea. She's 24. How's she going to do it? That was one. Two was, I don't know what MYOB is. Heck, I couldn't even spell in school and I certainly couldn't do maths. I was invoicing in Word. I mean, well, I could make some sort of table. But then what I realised is if you don't have a proper accounting back-end system, how do you keep track of who owes you money? until they go bust and you're out of pocket some 30 grand one client got me for. Um, so, you know, they are just two things that were challenges. Staffing was a challenge. You know, with Enyo, you're your own boss and you can run your business yourself. You know, you don't have to worry if someone doesn't show up for work and open up and then everyone's standing out the front waiting. You know, every day is a challenge and it's still a challenge now. Um, but the reality is with Enyo, you don't have that. You know, you, you're, you're your own boss. You have the back-end support of someone who's done it for over 20 years, who's fucked up before and knows what not to do. So you're not going to make those errors. Um, it, it's an invaluable resource. And much like Barb, she's had to she's had to keep up with trends over the last twenty five years. Look at her hair, P.S. <laughs> <laughs> I'm feeling <laughs> nice like a Barbie different, doll. different to the one we had up on the screen before. <laughs> uh, tell me, how is it, especially in your business of PR, how is it that you keep up with trends, especially that in uh, social media? Yes. Look, one of the most important things, and I say this all the time, is that if you don't refresh and renew in whatever business you're in, whether it's Enyo, whether you're a cosmetic brand, whether you're a PR company, if you don't refresh and renew what you're doing in terms of tactics, in terms of presentation, in terms of the way you sell, you will become an afterthought. And for me, I started as a PR company. I soon realised some eight years into the business that social media was going to be a big part of the landscape. I was an early adopter. Did I know whether it was going to work? No, I didn't. But did I have to adopt in order to keep succeeding and growing? Yes, I did. What was next after that is another company I've got now called Social Union, which is purely social media content creation. So when you see on Enyo or Sante by Enyo's Instagram page a nice picture that's flat lay, that could be one of the pictures that Social Union has created. Refresh and renew is the biggest thing. Don't think how you sold five years ago is how you're going to sell a Sante by Enyo uh, makeup remover disc. It's not. I mean, obviously, it was only launched recently, but you understand what I mean. You can't use the same tactics and the same uh, audience as you've used for the last five years. You have to continually refresh and renew techniques and also people to sell to. Um, so that's been the biggest thing for me. I mean, I was really a rubbish student at school. I was very dumb. Um, but what I had was dedication and I had a desire to succeed. And I think that's really all you need to have. If you've got a good product and you're passionate about the product and you've got back-end support, well, the world's your oyster, to be honest with you. And P.S., that $40,000 a month, heck, that's impressive. It is yeah. impressive, yeah. Oh, I was like this. And Imagine you know, what we could buy with that. And uh, you just... Uh, I might have a haircut. Uh, well, you earn 41% on that as well. Amazing. Yeah. So it's really, you know, and, and that actually excites me. Uh, I love nothing more when, I, when, when head of my accounts come to me and, and we, we see the top 10 sellers and, and oh my God, she just made $20,000 in a month. I get so excited. Even now, I can't, you know, because this is just the coolest thing to help somebody to actually fulfill their dream. Yes. You know, and they go, oh, we just bought a new car, are we going, you know, it's, 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 it's pretty cool. Rewarding. It's the word, yes, rewarding. So you were talking... I learned one thing at school. <laughs> <laughs> just don't ask me how to spell it. 
<laughs> you, were, you were talking about social media trends. Yeah. Now, there's a lot of people that will be watching at home and in the audience tonight that want to know a little bit more about that social media. Do you know any insight in regards to where it's heading in the future? It's evolving so quickly. What's next in yeah, that landscape? I was actually um, yesterday just with a, a group from Priceline and, and I was part of a digital disruptors panel and we were talking about, you know, is Instagram, is Facebook, is Pinterest, you know, is Snapchat going to be around forever? And I was like, I was the only one on the panel who said, I don't know. And I think that's been one of the biggest things. Don't worry about what's happening five years down the track. Worry about what's happening now. Is Facebook the number one way of communicating with your potential and your purchases? Absolutely. What's second to that is YouTube demonstrations. What's third to that is Instagram. Worry about what's hot right now. Ooh. Worry about how you can get sales through your door right now, not where that's going in five years' time. I've never, ever been one to have a business plan. I've never been one to try and forecast my future. I think the most important thing is to worry about the now and how you get through the next 12 months rather than, is it going to be there? I mean, MySpace was a thing when I was 18. God, that's long gone. You know what would surprise me? LinkedIn was actually the first one of all those media things. And it you know was I don't before. use it. Me I know it's a big thing, but for me, and I think this is a this would resonate with a lot of you. You sell a product to make money. If you're going to put something on social media, it's not just a pretty picture. There's got to be a reason. Mm. Why do I take my makeup off with a Sante by Enyo pad and do one side? Because I want to demonstrate how easy it is for everybody else and encourage them to buy it. Not just because I want someone to see me with half a face of makeup and red rosacea cheeks on one side and looking like Giselle on the other. <laughs> <laughs> see, and you know trying, what? wish. Uh, the in interesting part is now um, a lot of our Enyo start doing the same for their customers. So the customers start following you then, and, um, and they start using the medium. You know, they do kitchen demonstrations, you know, how to clean an oven, how to clean the bathroom, and they show before and after shots. And they really they engage with the customer that way, and it is really the so visual. prevalent. Yeah. People don't want to read, people want visual. Mm. So if you can demonstrate through your channels a way to use that dust glove, a way to use the Sante by Enyo makeup remover disc if you've got a winged eyeliner. People want to see how to use it. If they see how to use it, they'll buy it. So um, tell me, there's a lot of competitors out there and they're, they're coming in and going just as quick. It's evolving so quick, especially on social media. Give us some hints and tips in regards to what you have done with your business and your, your personal brand that helps you stand out from your competitors. Never worry about my competition. You don't ever look sideways, worry about what you're doing and how you can do it better and encouraging your team to be the best they can be. Mm. You know, I think so many people worry about what Mrs Jones down the road is doing rather than worrying about engaging with your customer base, making sure that your delivery of your product and your service is done 200%, renewing and refreshing your ways of delivering your messaging with regards to product that you're selling. Um, I've never, ever been one to go, OK, well... I've got to look at what X PR company, well, you can see I'm a good PR company because I'm never going to mention my competitors, <laughs> what X PR company is doing because I actually don't care. You know, I think the most important thing is if you want inspiration, if you want to stay ahead of the game, use the World Wide Web, use social media, mm. use Instagram and Facebook to look at what people are doing abroad. Heck, look at what they're doing in Austria. You know, they'll have different techniques perhaps to what we're doing here in Australia. So that's how I stay ahead of the game. Also, I get into trouble a lot, as well documented. Um, and, and obviously, my books as well have helped. I've got a new one coming out in December, which is a tips and tricks book on business. It was going to say a no-nonsense guide, but I changed it to say a no-bullshit guide. And I thought, oh, Barb's not going to be happy. She doesn't <laughs> like me swearing. Um, but that's, you know, whatever opportunity comes your way, take it. I've been a big advocate for that. You know, I was a stupid student in school, but what I did was I made sure every opportunity that came to me I took, whether I knew how to do it or I didn't. I mean, heck, I never even read the novels at school. I've now got three, three fiction novels and a non-fiction coming out in December. Why? Because someone came to me and said, do you want to do a book? And I was like, yeah, sure. Could I write it? Absolutely not. But there's people for that. So, you know, take every opportunity that comes your way. Don't be afraid to. And I think that the clip we watched before with the English or Irish, ugh, I don't want to insult her because people get funny about English and Irish, but the lady with the good tan and the blonde hair, she said she was such a reserved and shy person. Hell yeah. You know, she stepped outside her comfort zone. She put her shy and her non-confident person in her pocket and she went, you know what, I'm going to do this. And because of that, she's reaped the rewards and that's no different for me.
So social media aside, what would you say would be the number one skill that has made you successful? That failure is not an option. You know, um, I will push and push and push until I'm blue in the face. Did I, you know, when you look at what my week has been, I left home on Sunday, my two children with my husband, who is now back home. Um, I flew straight to Perth, went to sleep, got up, um, worked through the day, um, had a rehearsal at 2 o'clock, was on the stage at 4.30, left that night at 11.45 and was here today. Um, you know, I'm persistent and I'm consistent. Mm -hmm. um, that's the most important thing. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I look at everything as failure is not an option. You know, I've got a family to, to provide for. Um, my children, you know, I want to provide them with a good education and opportunity to see the world and do, you know, what they want to do after school, like gymnastics and every other extracurricular activity that they could possibly want to be. She did ask for a piano the other day. I was like, dude, get a job. <laughs> Enough. In piano, I mean, heck. Um, so, you know, failure is not an option. Persistence is key and be consistent. You know, um, it's not failure if you make a mistake. It's just learning. Mm. And that's been my biggest thing. What would you say would be the number of common mistakes that people make when starting out their business? And what advice would you give them? Um, that you only get what you put in. You know, um, most of the people I went to school with um, had, you know, when I started my business, they were either in uni or, or they were, you know, working somewhere and they would work their nine to five job and that was it for them. That's never what I wanted. Um, I knew that I wanted success and with success I needed to push hard for that success. So I wasn't the girl who was going for long lunches or taking a Friday off because it was cold weather and I couldn't be bothered getting out of bed. I was there before everybody else and I left after everyone else. Yes, it was my business, um, but that was my responsibility. So don't think... I guess in my business, I couldn't think that I was going to work less than when I was working for somebody else. It's very different for Enyo, though, because you can choose. You know, you saw on that clip again, I'll reference it, that some people have, as a full-time job, the lady who was, like, giving a bit of backcombing to her hair and has travelled a lot. <laughs> yeah. uh, and then other people did it to network and make friends and some extra cash on the side. So um, that's the fortunate thing about working with a company like Enyo is that you don't have that responsibility that ties you to your desk. I have responsibility that ties me to my desk because I don't have a large company that's global behind me who has done it for 20 years plus and has made the mistakes and has the, you know, the policies and procedures and infrastructure in, in place to support. Um, so I've worked harder than I've ever worked. Um, Ollie's got expensive taste, um, <laughs> unfortunately, so I have to work a million jobs. <laughs> Now, you mentioned some hard truths when you were starting out your business before. Barb, what were, what were some of the hard knocks that you faced when you first decided to start your own business with Enya? Um, basically having nothing, you know, having to make phone calls and tell Delstra that you can't pay the bills, can I pay it up in $50, you know, and ringing up to school because I couldn't afford to pay the school fee. And, you know, all this, this managing and at the same time, you work all hours already and, and you just know, you know, that... Um, going to the bank and asking them to, to allow you to the overdraft just a little bit longer. So, because it's just around the corner, it's just around the corner. And I think that was, and you know what, you become very humble. And at the same time, you become actually suddenly pride. And you know, pride becomes before the fall. It's, it's so, so true, you know. Things I would, would be too proud or too fearful to do, it's amazing what you do when, when you have bills to pay, you know. And, and I also believed in the business, but um, and it was just amazing. I would stand at the shopping center for a whole week, in, uh, and one person came up during that whole week. People always go around you in the shopping center, especially 20 years ago, 24 years ago. They invite birth around me and they said, would you be interested? No. Would it be? It? No. I mean, the question itself was stupid in my part, but I had to learn. Anyway, uh, I learned how, and one person stopped, and she said, what is this NGO stuff? And he said, oh, this is cleaning with fiber technology. Oh, yeah, what do you need this water? Now, the technology is this. No, no, and I gave her my spill. Thank God she bared with me. Anyway, and I said, but I can come to your house and demonstrate it to you. And you just invite a few friends. I said to her, and she said, I'm not interested. I said, I can just come, I just show you. It's fine. And then, anyway, so I showed her, and then she said, I oh, really, I, my friends would like that. And it started for me from that one demo. And this is now a multi-million dollar company, you know, from having nothing. 
And I dreamed very small to start with, and then it became bigger and bigger. And I think that, uh, you know, we need to be able to crawl, to walk, and then run. So it's a process, and I think most people give up before they actually start crawling. You know, they go like, oh, I can't run straight away too hard, instead of actually saying, well, now, you know what? We just, you know, toddled along. We need to sit down again and crawl for a while and, and go back to basics and then, you know, it takes a good six months to really establish your in your business. It's not just, you know, uh, like this. Would be, I would, would be setting you up for failure if I would, would tell you that, you know? Why aren't there more business owners in Australia? I mean, there are a lot of people out there that work for bosses and corporations that must think if only I could work for myself, if I, only I could you know, take those steps to start my own business, what advice would you give those people that are sitting at a desk or sitting at a job that are thinking about it but quite haven't stepped out of their comfort zone to, to make that move? Well, it's, it's a hard one for me because I, uh, I have to strive to, to make a difference. And I truly believe there's people, there are people like, for instance, I have 50 staff in head office, which I'm really grateful for, because if they all started their own business tomorrow, I would be out, you know, shit creek as I'll well. I'll join you. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I think um, if you really have, you want to do something for yourself and you start your own business, I think it's a fear factor which holds people back. Most of them, they, they, they think they're not good enough, and especially women, they always think they're not good enough, and then your friend will tell you, you know, oh, you know, no, you wouldn't do this, you know, then you have to go out and ask people, you're not very good with people, aren't you, you know? So, um, you know, you have very little confidence in yourself anyway, that's the way we, we might have been brought up, or whatever reason. Uh, I really believe that you need to believe in something Otherwise, you won't get up each time you fall over. And that's what I was saying. You need to stand for something. Because if you don't stand for something, you, 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 you just lie down. And, and as long as you love your job, by all means, I think very important. If you don't, change it. Because life is so short. I mean, 80 years and it's all over. And then you're in a, in a little village, you know, and live on the pension and eat dog food because you can't afford anything else. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, I watch Current Affair. <laughs> <laughs> What, what about you, Roxy? What, what would you say to those people that are sitting on the edge pondering about starting their own business? Look, um, if you're pondering, I don't think starting your own business um, is a good thing to do. I would say to you, it's smarter to look at a business like Enyo where you can start slowly, you can do it as a part-time job on the weekends or on a Thursday evening, and you can see if it's for you. Um, it's an easy test. There is no risk involved. Um, I believe it's a small subscription fee only to begin and end your business because to start your own business like I did, you have to take a lease somewhere, you have to buy furniture, you have to have telecommunications and computers and all of that, and then you have to have staff. It's a, it's a big risk. So if you're already sitting on the fence, well, heck, you know what? Probably don't do it. Start in a staggered way. And I think a staggered way is... Enyo is a very good example of that. You know, it may be your stepping stone to learning sales techniques, policies and procedure in business, what to do, what not to do, inventory, dispatch, and all of that because you've got the opportunity to have all of that training from the Enyo team. Um, if you're a nervous person, I think that's a smarter way of doing it. Mm -hmm. I was 24 and ruthless. I didn't really think about, well, if this fucks up, I'm history. I just did it. <laughs> mm. Luckily, it came good. Um, but I wasn't... Th these opportunities weren't there for me. You know, I have to tell you, I'm a good sales girl. If these opportunities were there for me, I would very, very likely have taken them up. I mean, I was... My job was working at McDonald's as a drive through chick, getting more boys' phone numbers than I was selling filler to fishes. Um, and when I wasn't there, I was at Kodak developing pictures. And once, actually, Nicole Kidman's person came in and I took a copy of her and Tom Cruise's pictures. <laughs> Could be worth a mozza now. Um, because opportunities like this, like with Enyo, where you can, you know, they dispatch the product for you, you sell it, they dispatch it, there's no risk. They didn't exist. You know, hmm. I went and worked for my, I think it was like $5.14 an hour, but hey, I got like five business cards a shift. <laughs> <laughs> started young, started young. So we're now going to hand over to our audience here who would like to ask any questions of Barb or Roxy. Would anyone like to ask anything? Got some microphones floating around the back. Just pop your hand Don't up. Be shy. Don't Not be all shy. at once, please. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyone? Just down the front here. Hi, ladies. Um, 
Is there any guidelines to promoting yourself with this business? Any guidelines? Guidelines to for when you, do, when you want to promote yourself and what you're doing with any. Yes, there are. We have an advertising policy, uh, basically, and which, which involves also, you know, how you basically uh, sell yourself as well as, as an entrepreneur. And, um, but the restrictions are not so that you can't, you know, work on an Insta or, or things like that. But we, when it comes to our brand, we're very protective uh, because, you know, we spend uh, a lot of time to, to make sure that we have a really good name and integrity, so there are guidelines in place, yes. But, uh, you know, they are not too harsh, I believe. Did that answer your question? If you, thank you, that was part answer. Um, so if you want to develop an area and advertise within that area or someone wants to advertise within an area you've approached, are there any restrictions, protocols established? Not really, because basically we don't actually have areas as such. You, you can basically work the whole country if, if you want to. We don't recommend it because ideally your customer is close by, you know. So uh, when it comes to advertising, um, we have an advertising as a policy where we basically screen any advertising uh, which gets done in an area anyway, you know. But there could be five people in your area, and uh, if everybody wants to advertise in that area, they would be perfectly fine uh, with us, you know, if they are happy to invest that kind of money. It's also very relationship-based, isn't it? Oh, I totally. Mean, I, I think one of the biggest things is, you know, even if there were five people in that particular Enyo, in that area and you were doing en yeah, selling Enyo, you know, it, there's a lot, there's thousands of people mm. in that area. And I think the whole thing about Enyo, well, for me anyway, is that you want that person to, I mean, when I'm, <laughs> I need to do something, I email Claire from head office and I'm like, so what do I use this for and what do I use that for? You want to establish that relationship mm. with the person. So I wouldn't see it as being an issue. I know from my perspective, you'd have your one sort of group and, and you'd have that one person that you'd keep going back to because you've established a relationship. Pretty they much know so. your family. That's a big thing about Enyo as well. It's a very... Mm. It's very family, very family orientated, and that was one of the, the big things for me um, as well that drew me to the company is that it's, it's like a family. If you've got questions, you can pick up the phone or get online and you'll get them answered straight away. I mean, I've been with you for 18 months now. I'm still asking poor Claire in the office, like, so I've got this issue and this is a black cabinet. What do I use for this? And she's straight back to me like that. And it's the same for the entrepreneurs. Any question is answered right away. And 25 million people in Australia. I'm sure there's there's plenty of customers right around the country for everyone. Any more questions out there from our audience? Just down the front here. There's two. Two at the back, blinded by the lights. As Jamie. I, say. I can't see anyone. I feel like I need my shade. Yeah. <laughs> this question's for both of you. What are, what's your top tip for recruiting and maintaining a good team? Okay. We spoke about well, it before, didn't we? Yes. Okay, it's interesting. I actually yes. bought a book when I was on my way to Perth, um, and it was a, a, a book with a blue cover, and it was about the new PR and marketing techniques. But part of it was about staff retention. Um, and one of the things they said in this book was... Um, um, like reward and applaud and pat your staff on the back but don't do it too much because if you're applauding them for what they should do on a day-to-day -day basis as part of their role they're not going to strive for more um, so that was one of the things I mean look it's not easy it's one of probably the hardest parts of my job I've got 30 staff now um, one broke up with her boyfriend the other day and felt the need to go into my husband Ollie's office who now works with us as well and say, can I leave for the day? And I was like, leave for the day? You broke up with your boyfriend on Saturday. Today is Monday. No, you can't leave for a day. So staffing is hard. Um, I think that, you know, do reward, do give praise, don't give too much if it's tasks that they should be doing on a normal basis. Um, look, I don't think there is a right or a wrong way. I don't mm. know that I've got it down pat. You know, the people that you think are going to be with you for the next 20 years, tomorrow come to your desk and say, oh, well, actually, I'm going. And you go, hang on, how the hell did that happen? Mm. Um, it's a hard one. You know, I think one of the biggest things as well is also that refresher and new thing that I mentioned before. And as long as there is continued opportunity within a role, people will stay. The second it becomes stagnant and the same thing day in, day out, I think that's when you have a challenge. Um, but in my business, I do treat it like my family. Um, that's at the boyfriend thing, like, come on, pull it together. 
it happens every three months. So I can't be <laughs> seriously like enough now, dump him and move along to the next one. Um, yeah. So that's one of the biggest things. I think as long as those opportunities are there for growth, you shouldn't have a problem. But look, Gen Y, and I think I'm in Gen Y, I don't know, but it's hard. You know, I've got 30 staff under 30. Um, and now one of them's even my husband, and I gave him the menial task of getting a hose reel for the wall, and he bought two and still they were wrong. It's like, <laughs> far out. Like, how simple is that? Oh, you need a Johnny. <laughs> oh, it's so, like, so it's not easy, and there is no quick fix on it at all. I wish I could say that there was. It took me 14 out of my 15 years in business to find a good team. Mm. And even then, when the team is good, then there'll be one, and it passes through like a cancer. You know, if there's one bad one, and then it just, it really does. So wean those ones out. So when it then comes from our point, you know, uh, from a company's uh, point, uh, we have the same challenges as Roxy, of course. When it comes from an entrepreneur's point and you would build, let's like, say, you want to build yourself a senior, as a senior team leader um, um, and sell the business, as we call it, uh, it is really to the point, it's, it's, a, it's a numbers game. You have to ask questions. It's like when I hire people, we get 150 people going for the job. And out of those 150, you might find two or three really uh, which, uh, which we agreed that we would basically come together. And the same is in, in our business when it comes to selling the business or, or recruiting as we call it as well. You need to talk to people, letting them know there's an opportunity there. You uh, need to talk to people who really believe that um, they have used the product, they, they, uh, they show uh, the love and the passion for the product, they see a purpose uh, uh, that which our product has on the market, and they want to hustle and have a bit of an income uh, and how much it is. And it's uh, uh, selling our business and the recruiting part is one of the most difficult things along the way because not enough, or we don't talk enough about it because people say we don't want to be pushy. Uh, well, somebody was pushy with Tammy, I uh, shouldn't name any names, <laughs> whoever, you don't know her, she's not up here anyway, who just did the most amazing months and, uh, you know, told her, paid the much, or asked her if she wanted to do the Enya business. And uh, she has been to the Maldives. She has been on, 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 on a cruise with me. She has been on various places. And uh, just because somebody actually said, you know what, this would be something you would like. And it took her four years to build her business. You know, it's not something you do overnight. She started with four demos, five demos, and then some, and now she's a senior team leader herself. So, um, yes, you need to share. You need to talk to people about it. I mean, my God, how often have I listened to boring people on the airplane, an accountant, and they tell you about their, their accountant life, and he goes, like, kill me now. <laughs> this is it. There must, nothing against accountants. I love accounts. I have, I'm, I'm a trained accountant myself. But come on, live a little on the edge. I believe we had a question down the back there. And down the front, we've got two more qu time for two more questions. So we'll come to you next. Only two. Oh, we can do more. A few more. Um, just a question uh, for the two of you personally. So, as very successful businesswomen, and Roxy, you talk about the need to renew and refresh. I'm just really interested how the two of you individually, uh, what you do to actually keep yourself uh, feeling fresh, motivated. How do you engage in making sure that? you know, you keep pushing forward. What do you do personally to keep yourself sort of invigorated that way? Well, <laughs> okay, mine, look, mine's a weird one. I'm just a person who is like literally always on, mm. even with three hours sleep. Um, I guess for me, how I say switched on is the fact that if I'm not switched on and if I miss that one opportunity, someone else is going to get mm. it. And that will be my competitor. It's like for you, if you're an entrepreneur and you don't make that sale, she'll go to the supermarket and she'll buy something that you could have actually sold her a better version of. Um, so for me, it's the fear of someone else pulling the, wool, pulling the rug from underneath me. I don't want to be beaten. Mm. That's the biggest motivator. Um, also, you know, seeing success, you know, keep in mind, as I said, I literally got like nothing out of 100 in my HSC. I think it's like a T, well, it was a T after me. I don't know what it is now. But, um, you know, for me, seeing success and, you know, going from this girl who was such a shit student, I was a receptionist. Um, that's all I could get a job as I had no uni degree. I didn't even finish the TAFE course. I was like, oh, this is a waste of time. I'm leaving. Um, seeing success for both myself and seeing something go from nothing to something and seeing my staff 
go from intern to publicist to senior publicist to operations manager. That's very rewarding and that keeps mm. you on. I don't know go slow and I don't know rest. Um, I just feel like there's so much opportunity. I can rest when I'm dead. There's plenty of time for that. I'm totally with you. Um, and mine is basically, um, I have this urge or I have this belief since I even was little, I uh, uh, want to make a difference. This, this is so, I can't for the life of me understand why not everybody is like I am, you know? Uh, you start from Which nothing. Which is why we get on and we've only got about <laughs> five friends. <laughs> yeah, but that's it. And one of them is each yeah, other. exactly. <laughs> my, lucky my microphone was turned off. <laughs> <laughs> it is really, uh, it's, it's one of those things, I, I just go like, um, it's, it's so simple, you know, you, you have to dedicate yourself to it. I have a very balanced life, people always think I haven't, you know, but my life is designed by me. Uh, nobody else designs my life when I spend, uh, want to spend it with my, my grandchildren, when I want to spend it on the weekend, how much sleep I get, I run every day or I, I work out every day. Tip number one, if... Barb invites you to do a gym session with you. With her, don't accept. No one warned me that Barb was actually an ex aerobics instructor. So I like strunced in in my crop top thinking I was cool. And then she starts exercising. I think I nearly died. <laughs> and at the end of the session, Claire, who is in charge of PR and marketing at Enyo, said, oh, By the way, Barb was an exercise instructor. Here's me with my crop top selfies trying to like. Flex my muscles, I nearly died. I think I like walked with a limp for about a week afterwards. So note to self, yes, she has a balanced lifestyle that involves a lot of exercise. I just wear crop tops and stand on a good angle so it looks like I believe in exercise. Uh, but in, in I'm one authentic. <laughs> One of the things is, um, and people who work with me in head office, I will come in in the morning about eight o'clock like, uh, like somebody just wound me up overnight and I go, we need to do this, we need to do this. Have you seen on Insta, such and such, he's posted this, you know, and we need to go next because I don't want to be the second to come out with that Insta post. We need to take photos, we need to do this, and everybody just in, in, in market, I have, my, my handbag hasn't even gone to my office yet because, I, and people then go like, have you, we saw your car downstairs, but you're not in your office. Because it's just so, I'm so driven that somebody else is, out before me with, with an Insta post, it, it's, it, it just gives me a nightmare. There was this, I have to share this with you, it's the funny thing, a lady hasn't taken her makeup off in 25 years. Uh, it was in the Daily Mail, and she had all these lumps under her eyelids, where basically the mascara has basically logged itself in it like little cysts. So anyway, and um, the Daily Mail, that came out, I read it, I was lying in bed uh, reading it, and, um, and they showed the eyelid and everything. And I, the same night, a screenshot to my marketing manager, and I said, this, we need to go out tomorrow morning, straight away with that, you know? Like, and that's why we always have to remove your, your eye makeup. That's why we develop Sante, so it's easy for you. You just need water, it takes you a few seconds. And so it was like 10 o'clock at night, and he, I my bag, go to sleep. <laughs> But it's just, I'm so obsessed that somebody else would do it before me. But we got it out on time, and people went, oh, gross! And I said, well, that's why we saw any of uh, the Sonte makeup removers, because it's so easy. You never, ever go to bed with your makeup on. But it's the same, it's that constant drive, and I, I, I thrive. You give me a challenge, I thrive on it, you know? People like, like being beaten. No, it's just like, give me something, you know? <laughs> Thank God we get enough. Yeah. Do you have a question at the back? Can you hear me? Yes. Um, my question is in relation to the sustainability. Um, I really appreciate that with Enyo. Um, but the instructions, I was wondering if you were going to go down that disruptor path and just put them on the web like an iPhone instruction so that you're reducing the paper? You know what? It's already done. We were actually just having had an audit the other day, uh, what other day, it's now six months ago, where we said we're producing too much paper, certain things go online, uh, you know, on the web, on, for people to look up on their, their tablets or whatever, so done. 
Right. Because certain things you start overlooking yourself if you don't live it or look at it all the time. Suddenly you end up with, with you know, oh, somebody said we need instructions in, in the box. We need instructions. For heaven's sake, it's a cleaning product. It's not a silk blouse. You know, you put it in a washing machine. At the end of the day, my friends, a laundry bag and it will be done. So, yes, we have to be constantly on top of it. Uh, I must say our company is totally carbon neutral uh, from the way it is uh, produced, from the way it is used, and from the way it will actually be upcycled. So, very proud of it, but a valid point. Done. Consider it done. Thank you. See, that's how we treat our entrepreneurs. You want it, you get it. <laughs> We've got another question just down here. Hi, oh my God, it's a bloke. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Welcome. Barb. It's lovely to see you. We actually do know each other. Um, uh, my question is, uh, we live in a culture that wants everything now. How are you going about making sure that product is to people uh, faster uh, than you know, yesterday? Uh, and how are you looking at uh, refreshing the products to make them uh, more relevant uh, in a modern society? Okay, um, from my point is, once the entrepreneur actually places the order, the order leaves within a very short time, most of the time, maximum 24 hours. What we sometimes find that uh, orders don't come through as quickly as we would like to. So what we're working currently on a system where basically, uh, I can't share more about it, but uh, <laughs> where, <laughs> where basically it will be much faster. So we're constantly developing, and the IT department is very hard at work. So it's something really exciting for other customers. So they should have it very, very quickly then. And when it comes to our technology, um, uh, Johannes Engel, who's our manufacturer in Austria, they constantly, I just came back from product training uh, over there, and they showed us some new product developments because fiber technology is changing so quickly. Uh, we're also trying to get away from polyester, maybe going back to uh, more natural-based products. It could be cotton, it could be uh, wood chips. So there's a lot of technology coming through all the time. It just needs to be tested, a little bit like medication. It might work on a small amount under controlled environments, and then they test it for a couple of years to make sure it's the long-lasting, what we are so proud of. We want products to last for three years, and um, so the testing is involved, but there's, it's ongoing, and I must say I'm very proud uh, of the manufacturer of our product, uh, products, how much he invests back into it. It's a valid question, but watch this space. Any other questions from the audience today? Uh, just out the back there, Jamie. to you both. I, um, at the moment, am struggling with making sure that I allocate my time out with family, friends, work, so forth. Um, do you guys have a tip to how you make sure that you allocate your time sort of evenly and don't neglect, you know, parts of your life? Well, I don't have many friends. <laughs> no, look, you know, I think one of the biggest things for me was, and I always say this to my staff, when I walk past my staff's desk and there's like this long A3 piece of paper with these to-dos, Forget the to-dos, do what you need to do and get it and do it at that time. You know, forget trying to do what you could do today, doing it tomorrow. I've never, ever been that type of a person. I always try and ensure that I get everything done that's in my inbox on that day because otherwise it just builds and builds and builds and builds. Then you spend your Saturday and Sunday chasing your towel trying mm. to catch up when you could be spending time with friends and family. Um, I think that a work-life balance, and this is a, a conversation that Barb and I have regularly, sorry I'm holding my hand here, but I can't actually see you, so that's why I want to look in your eyes and talk to you, um, is up to the individual. You know, um, I make sure that I do my gym three days a week. Would I like to do it five days a week? Yes, I would, but realistically, I can't fit that in. Mm. Um, I, well, you know, I, I do my shopping online, for instance, on Woolworths Online. They have a one-hour delivery service. So you've just got to do what fits your lifestyle. Um, Look, you know, I don't know that I've got a good work-life balance, but it works for me. Would it work for you? Probably not. Um, it wouldn't work for everybody, but it works for me. I get good, good time to spend with my children. I spend less time going out with friends than I would, you know, if I was kidless. Um, but I think you just have to do what fits in with your life and forget the to-do list. Do it today, not tomorrow, because it'll just, you know, back up. That's all that seems to happen when you have those stupid to-do lists. I, you just put yourself under undue stress. Of course, there are projects which take longer. But one of the things is, I think a good book to read is actually from Mia Freeman, uh, the one, um, Work, Strive, Balance. 
uh, which is just the myth uh, that we have to do it all. I think we are so, I have to catch up with my friends. And I must say, uh, uh, sometimes I don't see my friends for six months. Mm -hmm. And, um, and, but I will make sure, currently my grandchildren are my little world, so I will make sure I finish at five o'clock so I can spend an hour with them, so I just start early in the morning or on, on the weekend instead of watching my favorite TV show, I spend with them. So it's really also, what's important to you at the end of the day? Can you have it all? Probably, it depends what, you, what all is to it. If it is too much, of course you can't. It's, it's impossible, there's only 24 hours a day if you need, seven or, or six hours of sleep that's gone, then you need to wash, make up, and God knows what, what is else. And you know, at the end of the day, you might be left with eight hours a day if, if you're really uh, well organized. So have a look what is really important. And I find sometimes um, things I thought important when I was younger uh, or, uh, my, my, you know, are not that important to me anymore, you know? It's like working for 10 hours a day, you know, in, in, in the evening and not going home before seven. I just make up at another time then, and, uh, or I give it to a staff member. <laughs> <laughs> Do we have any last questions from the audience? One more just at the back there. Oh, thanks, Jamie. Hi, ladies. Um, my question's more targeted at Roxy. If you have your own business idea, using the example of Pixie's Bows, how do you give yourself on what seems like a simple idea and edge over your competitors? Branding. It's interesting. So for those of you who don't know, my daughter Pixie is six, and when she was about one, I always used to put a bow in her hair, but it was a headband because she had no hair. Mine's actually all stuck in as well. It runs in the family. Um, so, so many people where we live in Sydney were like, oh, my God, her bow's so nice. Where did you get it? And I was like, bugger that. I'm not going to tell you where this damn bow's from. I'm going to make them. So my parents, when I was younger, were clothing manufacturers, so my mum had good, good experience in understanding different types of ribbon. They're all grow grain ribbon. And so we just started making them. I set up a website that costs $3,000. Um, and basically, I have the, the bows in my office, and we would ship them out. What has, put us, what has set us apart, apart? It's a grow grain ribbon. You're exactly right. What's different about it? The branding. One, it's aligned to a kid who's got 105,000 followers. Two, we do a hell, of, a hell of a lot of seeding. And when I say seeding, what I mean is we gift mm. like you have no idea. We send to Suri Cruz, she's been photographed in them. We send them to J-Lo's kids. We send them to Mariah Carey's kids. They've all been photographed in them. Um, we give a lot of stock away. We are in a fortunate position that the cost of product is low so we can afford to give away. But when I give away, I don't give out two colours, I give out 25 colours because I know there's a much higher probability of a kid then picking one up of her favourite colour and actually saying, mummy, put it in my hair. So branding has been the, the whole business. We will be going into Maya stores, 14 stores, um, as of July 30 and on the Iconic Kids, which launches at the end of July. Why? Not because we've got bows that are any different to anyone else's. Look, ours are very nice quality, they're finished differently, etc. But because they are branded, they get there, they've got special branding, they've got non-slip pa pads at the back so that they don't fall out of fine hair. We have made sure that our shopping bags look good, we've made sure the Instagram looks good. We photograph Pixie wearing the bows with different hairstyles all the time. So it can be a simple idea, it's how you market it. It's exactly the same with Enyo. Sante Bienio makeup remover disc. How do you market it? The fact that it is the original, the fact that it takes your makeup off without using that damn micellar water. If I see Carrie Bickmore one more time talking about fucking micellar water. <laughs> like, seriously, drink the shit. Yeah. Do us all a favour. So that's, <laughs> that's the thing. You know, it comes down to... Well, you know, we do a lot of seeding with the Sante by Enyo pads to makeup artists mm. because it's, it's getting them in the hands of people who are of influence. And I don't mean influencers, people of influence, people that we open up a magazine and see walking down the street, someone who does our makeup for a 21st or a 30th and she then takes our makeup off that we've come in using that makeup remover pad. So that's how, you know, the product doesn't need to be a Louis Vuitton bag. It just needs to be branded well, and it needs to work. Mm. And I must say, the bows are wonderful. Thanks. <laughs> I, I also flogged some to Barb's as twins. Yeah. I was thrilled when she said they were girls. Uh, we can't wait, um, because uh, that's about the only thing they leave in the hair, funny enough. Good. Maybe it's so Good. tight they can't get I it I'll off. I'll put some extra sticky tape <laughs> on the back. <laughs>
The head starts to look a bit funny now. <laughs> yeah. now uh, it's indented. Uh, uh, speaking of seeding some of uh, some of the Enyo products and Sante products out to, uh, you know, the people in this room. I'm and, and taking people, this because I'm going to do a demo People joining via the web. I was going to steal that one, Rox. Um, I three there, steal away, people. Uh, Bob, talk us through what's on, what's on offer tonight for the people in the room and uh, joining us via the well, web. Well, guys, um, on offer for you is a, an amazing business opportunity for most, you know. Uh, what we also, uh, the startup cost of our business is, is actually negligent in compared if you would buy a boost juice or a whatever and you get exactly the same as any franchisee would, uh, would get uh, from boost juice, probably more. And, uh, but if you are joining uh, us uh, today uh, or over the next two weeks, I believe, you also get a Sonta kit, $282 worth. Is that's correct, yes. Yeah, I remember that one. I'm really good. Uh, I'm always excited when I remember my own things. <laughs> and uh, that's just a special thank you uh, gift to all of you. Also, uh, those people who are watching us on the webinar and so forth, uh, uh, to you for making the time to be here and uh, showing uh, your appreciation for what we have shared with you. It's really, really very rewarding that when you have started out your business in a garage with yourself and you talked a lot to yourself, to have a room full of people to share your experience with. So, um, as I said, one of the most important thing with any business is it's not the gift or how much it costs. Is it something you really want to do? Will it serve you well? Will it add to your quality of life? Will it add to your quality uh, you know, of, of lifestyle you want? Uh, do you know why I want to start it? And, uh, you know, and, and those are the important questions. It's not about the free gift. Uh, it's really, uh, is this something you feel passionate about it and uh, would serve you uh, well as well. That we have all the tools in place for you is one thing, but at the end of the day, it's up to you and it's, it, you, you still have to uh, do the work, you know. That it is fantastic, goes without saying, you know. So a little gift there for you. And I also believe those people have not been experienced or exposed to Enyo yet. If you book a demo, uh, you will receive one of our mini um, bundles. And there is a second offer, I believe you get also some um, free uh, fresh face bundles. Um, we, we just actually changed the name, which comes out on the 1st of July, so I have to be careful. Don't give the new word. <laughs> don't, let, don't let too much slip. Too yeah. much slip. And this, of course, is on top of the usual host rewards that they would receive from holding a demo themselves. These are, uh, I, I have to share this. Just, just out something. I know, I know we're running out of time, and we're always running out of time, but we are so interesting. It's worthwhile listening and spending time here with us. Um, at least it's not the, the what is the thing the original the, the, where they play against uh, Sydney? It's uh, state of origin I'll tomorrow. Of origin tomorrow because night. you already yes, would yes. be out the door. I know <laughs> tomorrow I have to finish on time up in Cairns because it's state of origin. And I said it's the first game Sydney is going to win, and that's always the same. It, uh, <laughs> it's always the same. It's seriously want to bet that Sydney is going to win tomorrow or New South Wales. I bet you, always the first game, I'm and then you win the last the one. Anyway, um, I don't forgot what I wanted to share with you. I was, <laughs> it was so fucking important. Yeah, I forgot. <laughs> house, oh, yeah, house rewards. It's good that you're all listening. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Um, to this day, um, actually it was still Friday, we have given away $2.5 million worth of house rewards just this financial year. 2.5 million. This is how many demos we hold, you know, and nevertheless, we could do it three times the entrepreneurs Australia-wide. And our demos are extremely popular, and we are extremely generous to make absolutely certain that the host, as I said, for allowing us to use her home, and also for taking a bit of time to invite her friends, and also for you who run your business, uh, you know, it's so easy actually then uh, to uh, get a demo because the rewards are so fantastic. It blew me away when I got the figure from my accountant. It's not a small figure, $2.5 million. It's, it's wow. a huge amount of money, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> it's quite, quite special. Well, Barb, Roxy, thank you so much for, Do we for have joining to leave us already? tonight. You don't. You can hang around up. and get to, get to mingle with them one-on-one. <laughs> -on -one. Um, but just in case you are interested in booking a demo or signing up to become a new business owner, in your gift bags there will be a form that you simply just need to fill in and head out to a customer care station outside. If you're joining us via the webinar, you'll be receiving an EDM very soon with those options. Thank you so much for joining us. Ladies and, and gentlemen, please stick around. And thank you for the webinar, around. guys, as yes. well. Yes. Uh, please stick Hi, around and ask whatever questions. Thank you all so much. Yeah. Hi, Mum. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent.
actually we have people from Canada listening in, from the UK, as well as from Austria. How cool is that? Yes. Coffee so famous. famous. Well, the backs of, the backs of your heads are famous. And Melbourne. Thank you, Thank you guys. Everyone. Thank you.